In just over a month, Hyperia opens to the public and we're going to have the new tallest coaster here in the UK. But the question is, is it going to live up to the hype? Area. So, there's a lot of different opinions out there about whether Hyperia is going to be any good or not. Some people say it's too slow, some say it's too short, there's been budget cutbacks. It's the first coaster in a long time at Thorpe Park. It's not got that dark theme that they've used in all their other coasters. And so what's it going to be like? I mean, the first thing, if you look at the concept art, and I know concept art is just that, it is just a concept, it's not the final product. We're not getting what we initially thought we were getting. Um, for starters, that viewing platform over the lake, that was cut back, and I think that would have been spectacular to view that coaster on the, the splashdown. We're not going to have that. So that immediately has scaled things back, which is a little bit disappointing. The entire ride is not themed, um, and they've already said again that's budgetary cuts. You know, you look at something like Nemesis Reborn and Alton Towers, they went all out, and that feels like one of the last kind of Merlin UK projects that's going to get this TLC because it sounds like they're moving their attention elsewhere but Hyperia has no theming it is stylized instead of themed and I'm not sure how I feel about that I mean if you look at the other coasters within uh, Thorpe Park Swarm is very very well themed uh, the Walking Dead on the outside looks well themed I've not actually been in yet I know I know so again crazy theming so to have this coaster that's like, just there, is a little bit disappointing. And especially since this is, you know, it's gonna be, hopefully, a world-class coaster. It's the tallest here in the UK. Granted, nowhere near the tallest in other parts of the world, but it's getting a lot of attention from international uh, visitors because there are some really unique elements on that, which we'll get to in a minute. And then the park's obviously rebranding. It's going for this new lighter feel. And then they put a coaster in with no theming. Now again, I know that's been budgetary cuts, it's not the kind of Merlin Magic team, they obviously wanted to do more. It sounds like their hands were tied. So I'm a little bit disappointed on that one. Um, but whilst theming definitely adds to the experience, it's not the be all and end all. So hopefully, you know, even without it, it's still gonna be a great coaster. And the next thing, of course, is the train designs themselves. Now, this seems to have got mostly positive um, feedback online from what I can see. I don't think there's too many criticisms of it. It's certainly a little bit unique. Uh, most of the Mac trains look the same. If you look at Icon, you look at um, the one out in Leesburg, whose name I cannot remember right now, um, and you look at all their other ones, they're very, very similar. This one, they've kind of gone for a different feel. It's much more boxy. Some people are saying it's Lamborghini-esque. Sure, you say so. Um, but I quite like the trains. Although they aren't themed again, they're styled. I think they're really nice, um, and obviously seeing that going around recently for the test, I think it fits perfectly. So personally, I'm a huge fan of the trains. Actually, speaking of the trains, another thing that I personally am a massive, massive fan of, and I think every enthusiast is, is, I mean, Max designs are fantastic, but it is a lap bar, right? You are held in purely by a lap bar. Similar to Velocicoaster and a few other coasters like that, I think a lot of the general public look at things and go, wait, that goes upside down and there's no over the shoulders. That is a positive, that is a huge positive. It's much more kind of freeing when you're moving around. Um, you're perfectly safe, you're not going anywhere. And uh, yeah, I just, I think it adds to the thrill of people kind of being that, oh my God, is this safe? Um, the other interesting thing on this one is they've got the original over shoulder, sorry, the original lap bar restraints that Icon used to have, i.e. the ones with the handles kind of up here and no seatbelt, which hopefully will help with operations. Um, I know there's still many Mac coasters out there that don't have the seatbelts. Disappointing that Blackpool put them on. I'm sure it was an insurance thing, no doubt. Um, it does slow down operations or people that forget about them or don't undo them when they come back into the station and it takes longer for the ride ops to dispatch trains. So I'm really happy that they've got Mac trains minus the seatbelts. There's a few other criticisms floating around from people and I think these are probably unjustified. The first one is, oh my God, it's going far too slow. Uh, and if you look at that first test run, it crawled around parts of the track, for sure. But any of, well, I'm sure most of you guys watching this, you know how this works, right? They need time to bed in. It's typically, you know, even in a day, the end of the day is much faster than the start of the day. But if you think about it, this is brand spanking new. Those wheels have never run. Everything is new. It's got to go around multiple times, you know, get all that grease in, all that kind of good stuff. So 
yes, it looked slow. The point is, even if it is slow, it still makes it down the, around the track, right? So to me, that's positive that the chances of this valley in anywhere are slim. Not impossible, but slim. Clearly, it's done more test runs over the last few days and it will continue to do so over the next few weeks. Um, and no doubt it will get much, much faster. As I think Digital Dan said in his video, if you look at the original uh, footage we had of Nemesis Reborn going over that loop, everybody was like, oh my God, it barely made it. It never absolutely flies around. So I don't think speed's an issue. Um, personally, I look at those elements that are on there. There are just some absolutely bonkers elements, some which I believe are kind of world first. I mean, that drop is crazy. The fact that it's, it kind of goes over the edge a bit Iron Gwazi-esque and then just flips around on itself. Um, that looks like it'll be absolutely stunning. And even in that slow first test run, the rear seats got absolutely whipped over that edge. So when that is at full speed, that is gonna be spectacular. You then got a few other elements. The Emelman, again, took that at a decent pace even for its first couple of runs. So I don't think there's gonna be any issues there. That outer bank, uh, element, which I'm pretty sure is a, a first, I don't think there's any other coasters out there with that element, looks mental, absolutely mental. The fact that you're going to be basically sideways at that height, going around that, and then into a kind of inversion again, just bonkers. Mac have really done something spectacular there by the looks of it. Similarly, when it gets to the next element, the stall element, um, I actually hope it does take that reasonably slow because that'll just add to the experience of being suspended upside down for a long period of time. You know, I've done Velocicoaster, I've done Batman Gotham Escape thing in Park Warner, uh, two Intamin coasters that are fantastic when it comes to stalls. I've not been on any Mac stalls, and I'm actually not sure if Mac have ever done a stall, but it looks fantastic, and I'm really keen to see that element. And then after that, that's you kind of returning back to the station. So the other criticism is this is a very short ride. And there's no denying that, it is definitely a short ride, but longer doesn't mean better, right? And again, another ride that gets criticised quite a lot in the UK, it seems to be very Marmite, you either love it or you hate it, is the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. For a lot of people, and I kind of sit on the fence on this one, you've got the first drop, you've got a couple of kind of inversions, uh, not inversions, not on the big one, uh, a couple of airtime hills, and then after the turnaround, <laughs> I've heard people call it a monorail, you know, and it is one of the longest coasters, I think, in Europe. So length in itself isn't a, a massive indicator of a decent ride, right? It's probably better to be short and punchy than long and drawn out. So the length itself doesn't bother me based on the elements that we've seen. I think it's going to be absolutely spectacular. They've also put some stats up, and I think they've said it's close to 15 seconds of airtime which is also absolutely crazy. I don't think there's too many coasters in the UK where you get that much airtime at all. Uh, so 15 seconds on a ride that itself looks to take, what, maybe 40 to 50 seconds? That's a significant portion of that that is airtime. So personally, I'm a little disappointed that they've scaled back from the concept art. We're not getting that viewing platform. It's not really themed. It does look a little bit cattle pen esque and like Smiler style with the, the way they've got the, the queue line going underneath the ride with a kind of cage around it. I'm not a massive fan of that. But at the end of the day, all that matters is what the ride itself is like. Um, so I'm hoping that two trains is enough for them. Kind of look at, again, I look at Icon, Blackpool. They have three trains. Granted, they don't regularly run the three trains anymore. They did for quite a bit when it was first opened. And they do occasionally get that third train out. So I'm hoping two trains is enough capacity because, well, certainly this year and possibly beyond, it's going to be a very popular ride. Um, and yeah, I personally think it is probably going to be a spectacular ride based on what we've seen. Obviously, until you get on it, you don't know. It could look amazing and be absolutely disastrous. So I'd love to hear what you think down below. You going to be there on opening day? Uh, sadly, I will not, but I hope to get down there at some point this year. Are you excited about it? Are you disappointed? What do you wish they would have done? Um, let me know below. <laughs>